My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we're looking at these. So some of you may remember these, some of you may not. Yeah. So as you can see, you can see that one. That one says the 4th of November 2017. Oh. So what these are, are uh, coolant samples that haven't been through heat cycles, I must say that. Right, these haven't been through heat cycles. And some of them have been leaking by the look of it. These have been in here forever. And let me just get arranged and we'll go through them. I feel epic. Right then, let's get some of the shit out of the way. So, what we've got is I've got a few selections. Um, so we'll go through these, each one. We'll have a look what we can see straight away without opening them. Uh, some of them are sealed better than others. The water has evaporated in this one a bit. These containers aren't fucking brilliant. I've literally not added anything or anything like that. And this is obvious, you know, this isn't scientific. If we're going to do something scientific, I'd have them in glass jars, blah, 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 blah. Um, the other thing is as well is some of them lost a bit of fluid because I've been taking them out, weighing them, putting them back, so on and so forth. <coughs> so, um, they've been in this container, in, the, in this box. Uh, they've been moved around a couple of times because of moving and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, so all I want to do really, and if you're not privy to this, this started like I said on the 4th of November, I, th I think, might have been in before that, um, four years ago, four and a half years ago pretty much now, and there is a piece of aluminium, a piece of magnesium and a piece of steel. Now, the pieces of steel, so the aluminium is off a casting, the magnesium is off a casting, and the steel is usually it's a bit of conrod or something. So they're all motorbike parts. So the reason for doing that is that they are um, the correct alloys. Now, putting them all in one tub, you know, people might say, Man, but in your system it's like that. You know, there is your, um, just say, there's your veins for your uh, pump and there's the casting. You know what I mean? And I want to put magnesium in there as well, because some of these have magnesium water pump castings. Um, the actual housing is magnesium, so on and so forth. Right then, so instead of fucking around, what I've got here is I've got water. So that's just regular tap water with a lot of sediment in it. We've got some water wetter ones, we've got some Evans ones, and we've got four um, just regular coolants that I have from various sources. We've got propylene and ethylene glycol, which is basically what antifreeze is. And then we've got a tap water versus DI water, right? So them two. All at the same time. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's look at the worst. Let's see what we're comparing it against. Right? Water is the worst, as we surely should know. Right? If you ask Evans, they don't show up about it. So, um, yeah, so there's, it's a lovely gravy colour. So this is a bit of Conrod. And we've got a bit of magnesium and that's probably disappeared. Well, it's not, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, <laughs> it's, right, that's the magnesium. I think, or is that the piston? No, that's that's the magnesium. Right then, so so this is the magnesium. As you can see, it looks like some of the rust has stuck to it. Uh, we've got a big fucking pit there. Wow, look at that. That's a big chewy chewy. There's a big pit there that's tied to a road away. That's because this is probably an oxide layer over the top and that's just it's broken through that. This is the uh, aluminium. So it's just oxidised and stained. 
and this is the steel so we've got a black iron oxide 3 well, I'm trying to do both here so there that black sheen there then we've just got your general rust the copper coatings acted pretty well so really from this it's pretty much what you'd expect you know what I mean it's rusted that's rusted the aluminium has tarnished I won't say it's really eroded the magnesium that's blown a hole in there that's quite amazing um, But you, one of the things you've got to remember here, there really isn't that much of an exchange of oxygen. Um, you know, that's all the oxygen's gone out of that water now. You put a fish in there, he's fucked. Right then, let's have a look at just some of these. So this is the mortal, this is 50-50. It's pretty much pink like it was. And there's really not that much going on. Um, it's done a... The bit of aluminium is tarnished slightly. The magnesium is tarnished slightly. It's not. It's not shining like it was. It has. It's got no pits in it. Weirdly enough, there's some red bits actually. Well, no. We'll do a close up on this one. I wasn't going to, but we'll do a close up on this one because. Um, I think that is interesting. It might. It looks like it might be some of the dye out of whatever this is, the thing that gives it its pink colour. So, there's our uh, aluminium. You can see it says art on the side of it. Absolutely fine, really. It's like dullish. This is 50-50. This is what I was talking about. You see, so we have got some pitting on the magnesium. And if you look some reason on the magnesium we've got this weird shit going on we're getting the sunlight there we go so if I pick that up yeah it's got cock crash but look at it and then the bit of steel there's nothing wrong with it you know what I mean literally not a mark on it lovely Right, so the next one we've got is the Coma 50-50. That's Coma. I, I picked these just because I could get these at my local buddy B&Q, not at uh, B&Q Alfred's, not because of any particular reason, love or hate or anything like that. This has not really changed colour whatsoever. And uh, it, it looks exactly the same as it went in. So, well done. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, yes, yeah, so I'll bring you in for a close-up of that. Right then, so the steel. I'm not wanting to touch these with my hands, you see, because then you your greasy fingerprints, blah, blah. The steel, well, fuck me, <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's brilliant. Uh, the magnesium's still starting to pit, right? So it seems like the magnesium, and I'm pretty sure I know why, but the Magnesium's taking a bit of hammering, but not that bad, to be quite honest, compared to some of these. The aluminium... Well, it's just fucking golden, isn't it? It looks like I've just... I literally, go back and... I'll even put a clip in. Go back and literally look at the originals of this video. That's exactly as it went in. All right, that's exactly the same bit of piston. Right, so the next one is the Prestone one. Um, again... The colour's gone weak ever so slightly. And, um, well, I'll just get the bits out and give you a close-up. Right then, so, this is the uh, aluminium, as you can see, for the press stone. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Maybe some slight, slight tarnishing. Nothing major at all that I can see. The steel looks good, but weirdly enough... The copper started to go black, not the steel, or something has. And then the magnesium, a bit worse this one. Oh, I say a bit worse, it's a lot, lot darker, as you can see. Finally for these uh, off-the-shelf normal cheapo brands is the Castrol. Um, we're going to get that out. 
and have a look at that. It's gone, it's still kept some of its colour. I can see there's some kind of solution. It's like a, like you dissolve salt in it or something. There's like a cloudiness to it, a white cloudiness to it. So it's not exactly the same as it was. Um, something's happened, obviously. Well, I hope so, anyway. <laughs> right, so this one, um, let me get out of the way of the natural light. It's gone black on the inside. On the outside, it's clean. This is a wrist pin. Um, and the reason why one's a wrist pin and one's a Conroy is because I've run out of bits. Uh, all from the same engine, mine. Um, again, this is the magnesium. When it's the oxided outside, this was, you know, this is exposed to the outside world as a part of a clutch casing. It seems to have been resistant, and I reckon this is because it's the oxide layer isn't too bad. Where I've split it, I've cracked it, so I hit it with a fucking hammer. It, the good news, where it's brand new virgin um, magnesium, it seems to have reacted, oxidised, if you will. Aluminium here, this is the side of a piston skirt. Um, similar kind of thing actually, where it's brand new fresh virgin material, it's oxidised slightly. I, I kind of expected that. It looks like it's got a slight roughish finish to it. So, out of these four, the Coma, the Prestone, the Castrol and the Mortal, this is the order that I rank them, right? It doesn't really mean anything, but first, second, third, fourth. Now, I haven't done any tests, right? If I had unlimited resources and supplies and stuff like that, we'd do these with heat cycling. The only thing I think heat cycling is going to do is just speed up the amount of reaction. Um, having a larger volume of coolant is just going to make sure that you have more free oxygen in there. <coughs> Excuse me. So, you know, that's all, that's all I'm going to see from that. I expect to see from that, should I say. This doesn't mean that this is in any way representative. What it means is there is a difference, right? I can see clearly see a difference between these. This is the murkiest and its bits look the worst and then so on. Presto's pretty good and Coma. And these two are pretty cheap. The Castrol and the Mortal were quite expensive. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, it's probably all the glycol in the air. <laughs> um, but no, uh, if, if I had to give any recommendation whatsoever, eh, eh, this is how I rate these based on this crude, crude experiment. And this is after four and a half years, right? You shouldn't be leaving your coolant in there that long anyway. And after the first two year mark, they were all pretty good, to be quite honest. As you'd expect, you know, it's a simple thing to do. Now let's move on to some of the more fringe ideas. So the next ones are water wetter and uh, Evans. And we're just playing around with these um, just to fucking see what happens, basically. So we'll start with... Uh, fuck it, start with the Evans because that's the closest. I wanted to see what it does. They claim this is a lifetime coolant, right? They reckon you put this in. It literally says you put this in. You never have to worry about it again because there's no water. So this is pure straight up Evans versus Evans with water added just for the shits and giggles, right? And the reason why I wanted to do this is because these are antifreezes with water added. You get, you see what I mean. So it, what's happened is, I've had a sneaky peek today. What's happened is is quite interesting. So this is. The water wet, uh, this is the Evans plus the water. Uh, so, get these out. All right, so, the steel, weirdly enough, there's nothing on that side. This is the side it was probably laid down for the most of it, but I thought, well, hang about it. That's what I thought at first. I thought, oh, well, this has been laid on the bottom as that nice, shiny side. Now I looked and went, oh, hang about. What the fuck is all that? Now, 
I am going to keep this and I am going to raise it as a pet of my own. <laughs> what I'm going to do is, I want this analysed. I want to know what the shit is. Right. At first I thought, oh, rust, but it's not. It doesn't look like it. It's almost like something's come out of suspension and stuck to the steel. Weirdly enough, protecting the steel. Because look, that's fucking golden. I'm so glad I did this. I thought it was a stupid idea at first. It does seem to be, if I can grab a bit of it, it does chip off. It's sticky, it's gooey. Look, there's a bit. We can keep that. And back on there. Yeah. So, fuck me, whatever that is. It's probably fucking something like out of venom or something. That's what it looks like. So now this is the bit of the magnesium. And as you can see what it does, the colour has come out of the magnesium. So whatever gives Evan this Evans this red colour is completely coated it. And when I say completely, let me get it against something a bit more contrasting. It's literally red all over. There's a red sheen to all of it. There we go. To all of it. Every corner, I can't do much. Every edge, every corner, it's covered it. With the aluminium, the same thing. So I wonder if this is what Evans does. Is it coats everything with these? You can see in the solution, the red stuff just binds to everything, or something binds to everything, and the red stuff binds to that. A bit like how you would copper coat something and then chrome it, you know, so you do a nickel flash and then a copper and blah, 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 you know, all these layers. Maybe that's what happened here, is it tried to do it, but for some reason, because of the water, it didn't react that way. But, whatever it did, it's almost like a sacrificial anode, because the steel looks untouched. And this is what the fluid looks like there afterwards just a lot of sediment and the the color's gone out of it weird so the next one is evans so literally just put evans in and yeah you can see how you can see how goopy this stuff is if you can see no you can't see fuck all there we go so you can see the consistency of this stuff. It's like fucking oil. Look, you can see how it's very... It's not like the others at all. It's very, well, it is like something. You'll see that soon. So as you can see, that one you can't see. Let's hope you've got nothing magnesium in your engine. The aluminium, 100% fine. And the steel, bang it all a bit. 100% fine. Actually, I say that, but something else has happened. So, let me bring you in. And this is quite interesting. So, Evans. Lifetime coolant. Now, I, there's bits coming off this. So, this magnesium, sorry. This magnesium, there's bits coming off it. There's literally bits coming off it. It's eroding away. The edges aren't as sharp. This edge here has been eroded away. It's duller. So if you've got magnesium, Evans is going to fuck you over. More than the Presto and more than all the others. You've got aluminium. Seems to be fine. Seems to be absolutely fine. This is the interesting thing. So the steel is pristine. But the copper isn't. So you can see the steel. Yeah, beautiful. Right? Not the copper though. So all Delboy will be pissed off if he puts any copper grease on anything. It looks like this stuff. I don't know if it just dulls it, but that you see dulling means it's reacting with the surface. It looks like it's coming off, it looks like it's going very thin in some parts, like there. Right there, it looks like it's going very thin, like it's stripped it off. See, look, it's just bloody gone. Strange. Very thin. You can see it's getting very thin. Mmm. Which is not what I expected. So something funky. There's something going on inside this stuff. It really is. 
So the next one very quickly is water wetter. And I'll go through these very quickly. What I did is I put water wetter 50-50 with water and water wetter, which is 40 to one, which is what they recommend. 40 to one. <laughs> so water wetter is not, let me just make this clear. <coughs> wow, I cough my guts out. Corona. Water wetter is not a antifreeze. Water wetter is a um, corrosive inhibitor package. So basically what you do is, water's basically the best cool you can get your hands on, it's safe and blah, 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 and cheap. Stick that in your engine if you're doing racing and stuff, and it's never ever going to get cold where you live, then you don't need the antifreeze because it's never going to fucking freeze. You just stick water wetter in, that just stops the water corroding things. Right, that's what it claims. So, uh, <laughs> this hasn't gone well. So... <laughs> It just shows, I, want, I always want to go overboard and just see what happens if more is, in other words, more is not necessarily better. So this is the water wetter, a lot more than you should have. The aluminium has tarnished. The magnesium has grown friends. If you can see that, that's lovely. Wow, and even the steel has started to tarnish a bit, right, it's got some black bits on it. So that's more than you should do. I want to see this one, which is the crazy 40 to 1 they say, and the 40 to 1 has gone milky. Oh, <laughs> wow, wow. So the magnesium has tarnished, like you won't believe, and it started to erode away. You can see the edge is getting softer. The mag, the oh no, hang about. This is just sediment. Yeah, this is just sediment. This is just the way it's been sat. But the this is the aluminium. The aluminium has gone black, so that's gooey and horrible. And the steel, no, the steel's fine. So with this much. Your aluminium is going to tarnish, but your steel's not. That's quite interesting. They've done studies, you know. 60% of the time, it works every time. So to finally finish off, we've got propylene glycol, ethylene glycol. So MEG and propylene glycol. And uh, this is basically what antifreeze is. Modern antifreezes are today. You mix either one of these or a mix of these two. With water yeah usually 50 50 ratio for cold climates the warmer you go the less of this stuff you need up to about 20 percent 10 percent stuff like that and it's always not a bad idea to have some the problem with this stuff is that the thermal conductivity and uh, the specific heat capacity how much heat it can absorb per kilo is crap compared to water and it really is shite any road so there's a difference between the two let's actually go through that Ethylene glycol is the cheaper, MEG, monoethylene glycol, which is what the M stands for. Uh, and again, this stuff looks very much... Master of Zoom. This stuff looks like Evans. That's because as far as we can tell, apart from the, the package that's added, uh, uh, this is what Evans is. So you can see, same kind of results. This is the magnesium. It's starting to get holes pitting through it and stuff like that. It's to soften the edges ever so slightly. The aluminium is completely fucking fine, and the steel, a bit of a wrist pin, again, is completely fine. Four, four and a half years later, right? So that's the ethylene glycol. Ethylene glycol is cheap, but the problem with, and there's a reason why it's cheap, ethylene glycol is cheap because it is toxic to humans. So it has limited uses and therefore is cheap. Propylene glycol, on the other hand, is not uh, toxic in smaller, small quantities and so on. This stuff actually goes in your food. There's some foods that propylene glycol is in, so that's how untoxic it is. And same kind of consistency. If we have a look at this, right, there's a piece of piston, aluminium, that's where it was cut, absolutely beautiful. Bit of conrod. Now, this is the interesting thing, that... Um, the copper hasn't come off 
at all. There's the shiny bits and the dull bits. And this is the magnesium. And the magnesium has just tarnished. So magnesium, any kind of antifreeze that is glycol based in any kind of way, all your data sheets, if you've got magnesium parts, they are going to tarnish internally. So if you have a magnesium water pump, it is going to tarnish, right? On the on the internals, right? You pump any kind of antifreeze through it, that's just the way it's going to go. How long it take for it to rot through, we don't know from this because this isn't, you know, there's no thermal cycles involved. Um, yeah, you know, so whichever, whichever between these two, they both seem to perform against these three materials on a cold test over four and a half years, about the same. And, you know, <laughs> when you look at the when you look at the chemical sheets between the two, there's not there's really nothing fucking much between them. Last one, absolute last one. We're getting there. Uh, these have been sealed or resealed, should I say? Uh, this is uh, tap water with this is with um, the mortal. I use the mortal for this because the mortal was concentrated. So this is the mortal tap water versus mortal di water. And I can already see a difference, a slight difference. This seems to have more of the original fluorescence to it, more of the, it's almost like a glow, is that one. This one seems, oh is it? Oh, am I talking shite? No, it does, it, eh, it's one of the things. This seems to be, I don't know, fuck it up. Now I've looked at it, maybe it's just the light where I'm sat. So this was a piece of the same piece of rod, right? So this is the tap water. So I'll put that there. I can touch these. I'm not really that bothered about these. And this is the DI water. Now remember, these are not thermally cycled, and I'm going to rerun this experiment quite soon. So that's the tap water one. Let me just show you the edge or the end. Come on, oh fuck, I'll just pick up my fucking fingers. Right, there's the, there's the end, very shiny. So it was milled. That was just rough cut, I think, or whatever it was. What's it feel like? Ah, so there is a slight difference. See, same piece of steel. Yeah. Next to that one. This one feels rougher. If you can see it. Can we see it? Yeah, you can see it. Oh, can you? This, this is definitely duller and rougher. And this is shinier. And that one, the rougher one, is the tap water one. So it's made a slight difference. No rust though, so it's not about, it's obviously some other kind of reaction maybe. Yeah, it does, it, this feels a lot smoother. Well, there's a way I can test that, like demonstrate how smooth one is. Drag a plane card across it with a bit of apparatus, I don't fucking know. Oh, and maybe even drip some oil on it and see which one runs off it easier. Any road, so that's that. So, the tap water one's rougher. And the DI one is um, not as rough. So yeah, something's happened to this more than this. But after four and a half years, this is cold. I must make that extremely clear. And that matters, right? Chemical reactions, the speed of a chemical reaction in nearly all cases increases if the temperatures are high because there's more free energy kicking around, which would make complete sense. So, <laughs> these are going to go away now, and I'm not going to see them for hopefully 10 years. Well, 6 years, 5.5 years from now. But what can we say? There is a difference between tap water and DI water. How much after so much time, I don't know. We'll revisit that one soon. Probably in glycol, anything glycol, I can't see any difference. 
Water wetter really does actually have to be in small quantities to work better. The cheaper coolants seem to work better than the more expensive ones, and these are for cars, just general cheap coolants. Evans is doing something really fucking funky that I need to look into the future, and water kills shit. Right, so that's that. Um, what to take from this? Regular 50-50 works fine and seems to work better than most things. Is Evans a lifetime coolant? I don't think so. That magnesium looks like shit and some of the other bits looking a bit funky as well. Does adding water to Evans fuck it up? It does actually, by the look of it, you know, it made it go really, really funky. What I'm going to leave you with right at the end is the graphs of the weights. So I cleaned all of these parts. I've just got to do the final weigh-in after this video and you'll see the graph over the years. It's been a long, long, long pain in the arse topic. What we're going to be doing next with any of these things is, like I say, we'll revisit them in six years if I remember. Right? I don't see anything massively different happening. What we are going to do is I'm going to do a set of five different fluids with a hot cycle test. Something I've been working on uh, in the background and we will see it very soon. Hope that makes sense. I know this has been a long one and I'll see you in a bit.